All right, we live, Kozo. All right. Oh, we're, we're recording. All right, you know, so we back at it again with another Cash Media episode. So yesterday, like, and Nicole Jokic won MVP for the third time, bro. So he's a three-time MVP. Let's start with that. What's your thoughts on uh, on Buddy winning MVP for the third uh, time? Nikola Jokic for the MVP for a third time, I think it's just overkill. Because I just feel like, me personally, I feel like Shy, Gil the mm-hmm. Sound of the XGA, um, deserved it. Mm-hmm. Um, don't get me wrong, though. I don't want to take away anything that Joker did. Mm-hmm. You know, much respect. He had crazy numbers. His numbers weren't as good as his previous MVP years, but um, nonetheless, it was well deserving. But I just feel like SGA deserved it. Mm-hmm. Well, I just felt like we needed a new face. Mm-hmm. And it's a Joker is just um, just a safer pick, mm-hmm. you know, because he's the defending champion, um, the defending finals MVP. So I feel like that was just a safe pick for them. Mm-hmm. And we've been wrong in the past where they pick an MVP and then they'll lose. They're going to lose um, the upcoming year. But, you know, nonetheless, congratulations to Joker. Did you see his reaction to it? You didn't even see me excited. You know? Yeah, he, he said he uh, he was bored. <laughs> he was bored with the MVP race. <laughs> so it's whatever. It is what it is. Congratulations. <laughs> Honestly, uh, like with this MVP, with this MVP year, this this was probably just as hard as the as the rest, in my opinion. Right? Like I know Shaq yesterday, like he expressed his opinion yesterday on TNT when the award got put out. Mm-hmm. And like that moment when Jokic won it, he quickly went with the approach that Shaw Shaw Gilligas Alexander should have won the MVP award. And I had a conversation with AK earlier, uh, a couple months back, probably maybe even a couple weeks, where I said I think Shaw Gill has a strong argument to win it. Now, mm-hmm. personally, I thought Lucas should have won it. Uh, and you know, if we're going off, you know, the context of the season, and you're looking, and we're looking at it with stats because. Jokic had won the award, you know, as a six seed, less than 50 wins, and similar to what Jokic did right now, outside of the fact that Luke is not a center, so he's not going to be getting as much board, but he averaged way more points, and he was in the vicinity of averaging a triple-double throughout the year. Right? And Luke was my pick before the season, too, to win, but I just mm-hmm. was it. Luke was my pick to win the MVP yeah. at the beginning of the season, but yeah. I knew he wouldn't win as the season went on. Yeah. It, 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 because it's like it's, he's due for one, bro. Yeah, you, know, you hear the, like, you hear the rumblings, and you you can hear uh, the conversations being warped around Shea, Gildas, Alexandra, and Joker. Yeah. You didn't really hear just like last year. Everybody knew it was going to be either Joker or Embiid. Yeah, the new all season was going to either be Joker, Giannis, or you know, as as the later end of the season, not towards the beginning. You know, the beginning is always Tatum, mm-hmm. it's always LeBron, it's always AD, it's always a bunch of guys at the beginning of the season, but. Towards the end, you started hearing the rumblings of who was really going to win, and it wasn't a surprise, you know. So mm. I just feel like next year will probably be Luca's year because mm. it's just you know what they call it voters, um, voters fatigue, voters fatigue, you know. Voters so fatigue. I feel like that's going to happen after the reactions they're going to get this year with a lot of people disagreeing with this. Mm. Um, I feel like next year it's going to be a new pick, but so you know, so so my thing is like. I want to touch on like the argument for for Shaw Gill. Like, why do you think like people think Shaw Gill should win it? Why he should? Yeah, why he should have won it this year? Okay. 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 Well, I just felt like, like you said, you know, the MVP reward usually when it has a storyline to it, mm-hmm. it makes more sense. Mm-hmm. So he went from like the eleventh seed to like or to like or the twelfth seed to like the eleventh seed, then to the first seed. That's mm-hmm. a big jump. You know, so it's well deserved. You know, he led his team, a very young team, to the number one seed, and they're winning. You know, with, with good numbers. Like you said, he's not a center, so he's not going to have those, those, those numbers, those crazy double numbers with the rebound. Yeah. But sixty percent field goal shooting, twelve rebounds. Like he's, he's not going to get those. He shoots, he shoots efficiently, but yeah. if you take Shea out that team, mm. they're a lottery team, mm. right or wrong. You know. Yeah, it just goes to show you what the MVP means most valuable player. 
Mm. So take them out that team, they go from the one number one seed back mm. out to the lottery team. Mm. You take Joker out, they pretty they pretty much still competitive. Like you know, yeah. they're a deep team, so they'll they won't be a contender, mm. but I can still see them being you know tenth seed, eleventh seed, like you know, not down in the like the very very bottom. Mm. So, mm. and same thing with Luca. Luca's mm. that important to what the team's got going on, you know. Mm. So, like Shay. Definitely should have won the award, but he's young. You know, he has to, him and Luca. They both got time to, to you know, to win plenty. So. Mm-hmm. You see, but my my thing about it is with Shea is like strictly performance based, bro. Like if we if we if we go off precedent precedent in awards, right? Like outside of the stats, I think I think you can't base the award off stats, right? Strictly off statistics. Like there has to be some level of personal achievement. Uh, accomplishment that needs to be factored in, right? Uh, you we take in team success, you know, as a factor, but it shouldn't be an overwhelming factor, right? Which is obviously what we've seen before. We've seen six seeds win it. We've seen third seeds, fourth seeds. You know what I'm saying? So we've seen a different variety of people win it. You know, depending on the outcome that they produced. My thing about with Shaw Gill is like partially what you just said, you know, like for one, nobody expected OKC to be in this position at all. You know what I'm saying? To be the first seed in the Western Conference, which is the toughest conference in all of yeah. basketball. Like, and not to mention, like, bro, this dude is putting up MJ numbers. Like right now, yes, we were, you know, we're having this comparison a lot of this, uh, the comparison with Anthony Edwards and MJ. But when you look at the actual numbers on how Michael Jordan was playing statistically and what Shaw Gilligas Alexander is doing statistically, like putting average, putting up 30 points, averaging 30 points per game, right? Five rebounds, five assists, two steals a game, 50 plus percent from the field. You know what I'm saying? Two steals a game. So it's like he's covering all the grounds. He's, he's, he's doing it on both ends of the ball. And he's efficient with his shot. You know what I'm saying? Like, he's hell of efficient as a guard, right? And then so you do all of this. He produces – he pr- basically produced the best outcome for his team. He, he he superseded and he overachieved what he was supposed to do this year. Now, yeah. with the Nuggets, right, like, I'm I'm in, I'm in the same boat as you. I have no arguments, no quarrels about you know Jokic winning MVP, right? It, I feel like he can win it, and he does deserve it. But the thing about it is, like when you have situations like Shaw Gilligas Alexander, you know, it's like it's almost like the MVP award almost takes out the guard position from winning the position. You know what I'm saying? Because a guard is not the, be the, the MVP is always going to be the quarterback, not time. Yeah. Super historic year. You have to have a super dynamic historic year yeah. to win it over a quarterback. You know, it, because last year, you know, I like they had one of those years, so it's like I don't and, understand. And, 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 and because last year, right? Like last year, Jokic won it, but we we know you. I'm mean, Jokic. Last year, Embiid won it. Yeah. But we we all know Jokic could have could have won it last year. And yeah. I remember the uh, the strongest argument that was that was for Jokic was was the fact that. You know, Jokic and the Nuggets were the one seed. They were the one seed last year. You know what I'm saying? That's not the case this year. So what's the case this year? The thing about it with Jokic this year, this year winning MVP is because you know he's he's giving you something else. He's giving you the same thing every year, which is high quality production. One of the best players in the league, right? Nobody is arguing against that. But see, but the thing about it with the MVP award, and even if we give it to somebody like Jokic, right? Like. I like to see an, a, a former MVP always like to – I like to see him step his game up. I like to see something like where you're giving us something new. Like it doesn't necessarily even have to be like, like all right, like Jokic turned his game from, you know, averaging 23, 24, 25 points per game to 30 points. But at least like – at least defend – yeah, I was gonna say that. Like, just give us something different. Like, yeah, you know, defend your position. Like, let's just say if if he was one seed again this year, right? Then I feel like he could have been doing something just as simple as dunking. If he would have just <laughs> dunked the ball, like, nah, seriously, no. Oh. If he would just dunk the ball like once or twice, 
that's something different that we just never seen him do. So it'd be like, obviously he's trying, like, you know, might have, he might have worked on his conditioning or, you know, his calves or something for him to be able to actually get up off the floor and jumping over a soda can, you know, because he doesn't jump. And when you don't jump, you can't block. I know he's tall, he's big, so he can block by, like, the guards that's not jumping. But in order to block an Anthony Davis or a B, you have to jump. You know, you have to you have to use your lateral. So he has to use his size more. He has to be able, like like you. I agree. Defensively, he he can give us a little more. One hundred. And, and and basically, it's it's, it's almost like one of and my I main key him because he's such a great player. You know, yeah. like the thing. And, and and one of my really one of my key points too is is it's almost like asserting your dominance. You know what I'm saying? Like it's like even Jokic numbers is, will always put himself in that argument, but you have to still set yourself different from the most by putting yourself in a position where it's like, okay, I'm overwhelmingly favored to win MVP because I'm the best player on the best team, and there's no argument. He was the best player on his team, right? And yeah. you can make, obviously you can argue arguably make a, a really strong argument to say he was the best player in the league, but. He wasn't. He didn't have the best team, so that that team went to OKC, and that's just simply based off that notion. I would have went with Shaq Bill on that. End. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. But um, we already on the ten minute mark, so we can we can move to the next subject on that one. Uh, so Wimbenyama won Rookie of the Year. Rudy Gobert won Defensive Player of the Year. All right, and I believe what did Shaq Gill win Most Improved? No, Maxi. Maxi, oh yeah, Maxi did win. Oh yeah, because Shaq Gill won it a couple years ago, or I think it was like last year. Um, so there are a couple awards, right? So obviously Victor Wibinyama. Mm -hmm. I think this is important to take away. He was uh a unanimous rookie of the year uh finalist or winner, I may say. Yeah. So like what what's what's the projection that you see for Wimbinyama like moving forward after winning his first MVP? Oh first MVP, first rookie of the year. Yeah, well, he can only win one. He can only win <laughs> one. So, um, but yeah, still, nonetheless, Rookie of the Year is an illustrious award, no matter what people think. Uh, you know, this is a deep draft class, mm. and uh, yeah, but, nah, sure. I think, really. but I think Rookie of the Year was just as obvious as mm. who the number one pick would be. You know, we knew it was going to be Wimby, the number one pick, no matter what. Mm. No matter how deep the draft was, we knew Wimby was going to go number one or you're mm -hmm. insane not to pick him. Mm -hmm. And just like for the rookie of the year, it was a lot of good rookies. They all played very well, you know, but who are you going to give it to? This guy right here. There's no way, no how you're going to give it to anybody else because who played as good as Wimby on both ends of the floor? Mm -hmm. as a rookie? He might have had one of the best rookie seasons in a long time. Like, if you really think about it, like, mm -hmm. he was in contention for Defensive Player of the Year, his rookie year. You know what I'm saying? Like, he could have won that award, too. Yeah. He was just that good. Yeah. You know? It's the fact that the Spurs was just a bad team overall that he might have been overlooked for, you know, a couple other awards. But if he could get them to be competitive within the next two to three years, mm -hmm. I see him in the MVP conversation. Mm -hmm. as one of the youngest MVPs to win it. Mm -hmm. That's what I'm thinking he's, you know, his trajectory is. He's that good. Yeah. I, if he could get the Spurs in the playoffs or in the play-in, he can be in that conversation for MVP over Joker, over Luka. That's mm -hmm. how good, that fast. Yeah. And this could be in, like, within two to three seasons. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So that's what I feel. I feel like he's gonna be a great player. He's gonna break records. He's gonna he's gonna do all the things. He's gonna do he's gonna do it all. Yeah, mm. I, I, I like his skill fits winning basketball. So mm. I, I personally feel like he's gonna win with at least he's gonna end his career with at least one ring. Mm. But um, and San Antonio is just one of those teams. Like you can't count them out. Yeah, they're a dynasty, right? Mm. So I feel like I have well, not now though. <laughs> they were. <laughs> The San Antonio Spurs is a dynasty, period. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what I'm trying to say, like, just, yeah. they're like, you know, like just uh, they're illustrious. They still yeah. got power. You know, they, like. They're a respectable uh, organization. 
the same conversation we're having with uh, Wimby. What uh, mm-hmm. well, what are the other Spurs big men that won um, Rookie of the Year? And who else? Uh, David Robinson. Exactly. Are they both- they did, did Tim Duncan win Rookie of the Year? Yes, he did. He did? Okay. Yeah. I know David Robinson 100% did. Yeah, yeah, but they both ended up being champions. Mm-hmm. what I'm trying to say. Mm-hmm. So same thing can happen with Wimby is what I'm is what I'm basically going at. Like mm-hmm. he's he's gonna follow that mold, like you know, just like the Lakers big man mold. Mm-hmm. I feel like Wimby's gonna follow that Spurs big man mold. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like mm-hmm. defensive player, champion, you know, just just all around high class player, mm-hmm. attitude, everything just professional, you know. Mm-hmm. I, I think that's gonna be that's gonna be Wimby for sure. And I think he's gonna be a lifer. Mm-hmm. I don't think he's going anywhere. Like, because I hear a lot of people saying Wimby needs to be in LA, New York. You know, you hear those conversations already, but mm-hmm. I like him for the Spurs. Yeah, okay. mm-hmm. Nah, I'm, I'm, I'm all in, cuz I'm, <laughs> I'm all in on Wimby, oh, y'all, dog. Cool. This so, dude is a fucking beast, dog. Right like, here. Yeah. Talk about the stocks. We talk about the height. We talk about the space. We talk about the shooting. We talk about like, bro. I like. I, I know we didn't. We didn't have a lot of uh, conversations or a lot of uh, streams about this, but I was already like fixated that Wimbenyama was going was going to tear this league up, bro. Like with the skill set that he has. Like for one, like he plays. He's obviously like seven four, fucking. He can dribble. He can shoot. He, it's like he plays like a like a wing. You know what I'm saying? Like he plays yeah. like a three or a two. You know what I'm saying? So everything about this dude is just about creating space and just getting his best shot. Like the thing about it is like what we see now with Wimbenyama is just strictly raw talent. Being able to just score, you know, with his length uh, and just having a a, 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 a mismatch. Or just simply just using his limbs to just like like get the ball in the hole, bro. <laughs> yeah. You know what I'm saying? So like in his rookie year, bro, he's the first player, uh, in, I, I believe in NBA history to average 20, 10, 3, and 3. So 20 points, 10 rebounds, three assists, three, three blocks. Right. So like when the Spurs and going to your comment when you were talking about like when he's gonna make the team better, like defensively, right? Like the Spurs were one of the worst defensive teams this year with him off the bench. When he was on the when he was on the court, they were one of the best defensive teams in the league. That's the that's the difference that Women Yama had on this team. So if the Spurs just had competent a, a more competent personnel, like let's just, you, you know, we can throw out scenarios where he has a better point guard. You, you know, he he has more efficient players around him, more experienced players around him. And that's not to say I think the Spurs have some good players, you know, on the on their you know on their roster now. Like I think um what's his name? Um uh the guy with the braids. I, I forget I forgot. Um Sam Castle. Um, oh, yeah. uh, Vassal. Vassal Devin Vassal. Yeah, yeah Devin Vassal, I think he's nice. Right. Um, who else? They gave him the max money, didn't they? Or something like that. Did they? I don't know. I know somebody else in that team is getting paid like big bucks. Somebody in that team is getting paid big bucks. And I, I'm not sure if it's Vassal mm-hmm. or, it's, um, or if it's another young guy, but somebody is like getting like a hundred million dollar kind of guy has like a hundred million dollar contract. Mm. They paid one of those young dudes like a season ago or two seasons ago. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it was Vassal. It was Vassal, right? Yeah, it was definitely. Yeah, it was Vassal. <laughs> One hundred thirty-five million. Good, but I didn't know if he was that good. I didn't know. I, I didn't realize. I didn't notice him until he got that contract. I'm like, that <laughs> yeah, they, they, yeah. They get how much? One hundred and thirty-five million. And they're like the 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 fifteenth seed. Yeah. Like, what the hell? Right. Oh, yo, you know, um, even Devin White, though, too. You know, Devin White is under uh, Spurs uh, salary cap. What you mean? Like, he's being, he's, like, he's under their salary cap. Who, Derek White? Yeah. Oh, yeah? Yeah, like, I'm looking at it for at least for, at least for this year, he's on there. We're it's oddly enough. Yeah, but I don't I don't know how updated this is, but it's yeah, it's showing it's showing 
he's remember when you trade a team, you take in their contract. When you, mm-hmm. I mean, when you trade for a player, you 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 take their contract. So mm-hmm. I don't think that's how that works. I don't think Spurs have to pay them anymore. Yeah, you're only still obligated to them when you like waive them or something like that. You know what I'm saying? When you waive yeah. them or you mm-hmm. cut them or something, and you gave them a max, mm-hmm. like you have to still pay them. But once you trade them and the team takes that money, there the team's got to pay that money. Mm-hmm. You're paying whoever you bring in. Yeah. You know. I'll show you. Oh my um. And Keldon, uh, Keldon Johnson also. Yeah. So, you know, you, I feel like, like that, they already have like their, their core, their three core. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So if, if they're going to continue to get good picks, if they're going to continue to be in the bottom seating, they're, 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 <laughs> you know, they're going to have a chance to still continue to go the Thunders route and build and, you know, build. Cause yeah. They, they were a terrible team last year still, so they're going to yeah. have a lottery. They're going to be a lottery team. So. <laughs> Probably going to be in the lottery for the next two years. So that's why I said for Wimby, I see in the next two seasons he's in that MVP talk because I feel like if they could get a number one pick this all season and then another lottery pick the following season, then maybe they could make a move or those players develop and turn out to be great players. They could end up like the Thunder and just be competitive young guys. Because mm. I feel like the, the, the tide is turning now. Obviously, you know, all the old guy OGs are already gone. Mm-hmm. So the tide has officially turned and all the young guys are, are here now. So mm-hmm. Wimby knocking right on that door, you know, right behind trailing right behind Luca, you know. No, that's a fact. I, I think like um over time, like in once that roster or once that car starts to be, you know mature. And have a little bit more time, you know, with, with the system that you know that uh under Greg Popovich, and they start to build a lot more chemistry, they understand each other, like similar to teams like the Nuggets, OKC, Timberwolves, like just breeding a, a, an organic connection, you know, as a roster. And then once they understand each other, they'll play better together and then they'll produce better results. But then it, uh, it's all going to start with the point guard position, right? So once they can finally, you know, once Wimby can have like a, a you know, a floor general, somebody who can facilitate, and even to an extent, like you know, they can they can they can work on their depth, their bench, because you know, all great teams need a bench in order for them to compete with even the best of them. Yep. Right? Then they're in a great position to succeed, bro. And so, and Wimby Yama is going to lead that charge. Like this yes. dude is 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 going to be. A monster, bro. Like I don't think the West understand how much trouble they're gonna be in in the upcoming years, bro. Like we thought, we thought the West was gonna be was was gonna be locked down by Luca in the next couple of years. But I think with Wimbin Yama coming into the scene with the, with the Spurs, bro, it's impossible to think that. That's impossible to think that when you have Ant Man, yeah. SGA, um, it ain't just Luca out there. It's, it's, yeah. it's, this is is it's real nasty in the West right now, bro. Yeah, it's continue yeah. to be nasty with, with, with Wimby, like you said, it's gonna continue, it's not getting any prettier in the West. Yeah, bro. You so know? just if if you if you put the Spurs in a position where they can actually win some shit, they have some legit people on, you know, they have some people who can who can who, who can drop buckets on that squad. Yeah. Telling you, bro, it's gonna be it's gonna be a hard competition if you see if you in a game seven, game six, game five. You need a you need a you, know, you down by two, and then you see a seven foot four motherfucker in the paint. <laughs> Swallow your shit. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So, uh, so th- this this goes into uh, another topic uh, that people were struggling with uh, with the defensive player the the defensive player of the year award, right? Uh, we are we know that Rudy Gobert, uh, the one defensive player of the year. And then, so, what's your thoughts on that, though? I mean, it's Rudy Gobert. You know what I mean? He's, like, one of the best defensive players of all time. Like, like it's not easy to score on Rudy Gobert if you really watch the game. Like, I feel like casual fans don't understand that. Like, you know, he's not, like, a superstar. So, like, people don't ever understand. But don't get me wrong, though. Voters remorse need to happen to every other award as well. Like, you can't just keep giving the same guy – the same award, even though it's deserving, mm-hmm. but he already has three. Mm-hmm. Give it to somebody else. Mm-hmm. You know, I feel like this year Anthony Davis should have really got it, bro. Mm-hmm. And I feel like he gets overlooked. Mm-hmm. Like I don't know why Anthony Davis got overlooked this season. Mm-hmm. 
for a bunch of awards. Like, mm-hmm. like I, I don't, I don't like that, you know. And I'm not gonna sit here and act like you know Rudy doesn't deserve this. Number one seed, you know, probably led the league what it blocks like next to Wimby, right? Mm-hmm. Like, that. like, but but I get it, I get it. It's his award, man. He's that guy. But I feel like he's just gonna be one of those guys that's just gonna be, you know, all time defensive players. Like they're just gonna give that to him because yeah. this is not gonna be his last one, I don't think. Yeah. They're gonna give him this one. He's playing in a competitive team. I see the Timberwolves competing for like the next two or three seasons with him on the team. So or if he stays on the team. So mm-hmm. like he's gonna win a few more or one or two more. So I think yeah. they're just they're just trying to they're trying to make other players break records, I think. They yeah. try to bring in I think the NBA is trying to bring in more viewers, oh. and the best way to do that is having record-breaking seasons, record-breaking this, record-breaking that. So if you have players breaking records and the most player to win the defensive title, or you know, Joker, unanimous this, or four times regular season MVP, people, more people, more casuals are gonna, you know, start watching. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So I feel like it's just a ploy by the NBA and um, and Adam Silver to just get more viewership. Mm. Cause I, I think they overlook a lot of good players. Like not to say that he didn't deserve it again, mm. but I feel like somebody else could have got it. Most so, so, um, but so you think Anthony Davis sh- should have had a better argument for defensive player of the year? Yeah, at least more votes. You know, at least like I know he got a few first place votes, but like it wasn't close enough. Like this wasn't close enough as I thought it would have been. You know. Mm. Mm. And and I don't like that, you know. I, I and, and, like you know, Anthony Davis was very vocal about it. You know, mm-hmm. he said he knew he knew he wasn't gonna win. Mm-hmm. So, like for him to say that, like have a crazy year defensively, yeah. and for you to say that is crazy. You know, it's just it's just I think it's just biasness. You know. Mm-hmm. Let me see. All right, so I'm looking at it now. So Rudy Gobert was the best defender in the NBA's best defensive team. As a result, the league's defensive player of the year with rookie uh for the record time fourth time. Uh so let me see. So he he had 72 out of a possible 99 first place votes. The San Antonio Spurs could do a Yama on Monday named Rookie of the Year was runner up. And, yep. then, and then Bam Adebayo was uh I think eight short after that. And the AD was like fourth. So you see how how much he's overlooked. Yeah, like like Bam is a great defensive player, but come on, who's better, mm-hmm. Bam or AD? Like, let's be honest. AD. You get what I'm trying to say? Who's better yeah. defensive? Well, Wimby, I'll give it to Wimby. Wimby's a great defensive player. Still, mm-hmm. like he's very versatile. Mm-hmm. He's a rookie, you know what I'm saying? Like, mm-hmm. still weak. You know, he still th- th- doesn't have his like size up yet. So you mm-hmm. know, there's a lot of work to be done, mm-hmm. but. You know, AD should have been at least runner up, in my, in my opinion. Mm-hmm. But I guess the seeding with the Lakers and stuff like that all goes into consideration. And, you know, if you think the best player on the best defensive team, it just makes more sense. It's a safer pick. And you think that that's how it should go? Best player on best defensive player on the on the best defensive team? Or do yeah. you think it should just be like stocks, stops, locks, like all like, that. You think all it should have been stop, like stop, stop, stop. yes, yes, all that. Um, highlights, more highlight defensive plays, all that mm-hmm. stuff. Just, I feel like the the voters pick to, based off of just analytics. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. Um, like best defensive players on the best defensive team, prevents the like. It's it's beyond that. You know, you gotta you gotta understand it's beyond that. Yeah. You take AD out that team, you see what happens with AD on that team. Mm-hmm. You, we could they like t- uh, uh, the the ball boy can lay it up with AD yeah. outside of the team. With yeah. with Ruby, Ruby Gobert outside of the team, the Timberwolves are still going to be the top five, top ten defensive team. Yeah, we just seen that too. <laughs> we just seen that. We yeah. just seen that. Yeah. So that 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 just goes right into my point. It's just like, come on, bro. Yeah. It's 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 it's, it's, it's biasness, bro. It's just yeah. it was the safer pick. And it was just based off of analytics, in my opinion. No, I, I, I agree. I, honestly, and honestly, bro, you you made a good argument for Anthony Davis. Uh, I'm not going to hold you. Like, I think in, in, in some way, shape, or form, you can even say that Anthony Davis probably deserved to, to win it this year over yeah. uh, over Wimbin Yama and yeah. to, to an extent. Like, yeah. I, and I, I, I completely understand the argument for Wimbin Yama. Yeah. Like moving forward. I, like, I don't think this should have been the year where he should have won it. I, obviously, he 
definitely could have won it. Runner up is crazy though in the rookie yeah. year, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. But I see where they were going with it though, mm-hmm. you know. That would have been a crazy, a crazy feat to have win both. That would have yeah. been crazy, you know. Yeah. But him being the 15th seed, it was like, come on, how good defensively are you if, if your team is not really winning? You know, like. It, it, but see, the thing about it is, is that that the argument for Wimby is the fact that is um is what I said earlier that it's just that when he, when he wasn't on the floor, that's literally when the Spurs were like the worst defensively. Yeah, but, and, like, and the same thing with Anthony Davis though. Yeah. Yeah, no, no, no. I agree because they were not on the floor. It's like the the Lakers are the worst. Yeah, probably. yeah, you know? nah, hundred percent. Probably worse than the Spurs. <laughs> <laughs> no, nah, that's a fact. Like yeah. Anthony Davis yeah. on the floor, you saw the remember because the the Warriors lost to the Lakers last year in the playoff. We saw what what was going on when Anthony Davis uh, in that series against the Warriors. The Warriors were not getting nothing at the rim. Nothing at the rim against the Lakers, right? So you can see, like, when Anthony Davis is not on the floor, bro, that paint is wide open against the Lakers, bro. It's, <laughs> it's, it's Lob City against the Lakers without Anthony Davis on the Lakers. So, nah, I, I, I feel exactly where you're coming from. You just like – but there'll, there'll be – there'll definitely be more arguments for – uh you know, for Wimby in the, in the future. I think – I definitely think he wins it next year, though. 100% for a fact, I think he wins it next year. There's no doubt about that. Next year or even a year to come. I can even see an MVP award happening in the next uh, – and probably maybe two seasons from now. Two, three yeah. seasons from now. So it's, it's definitely doable. All he has to do, he just needs to be a six seed. <laughs> six seed, he'll lock in that MVP award. Sixteen forty-eight wins. <laughs> All right, though. Um, so we just hit the thirty-minute mark. So let's let's chop it up with the games today. That's going on today, because uh, we got we got two games today. It's going down. The Knicks won yesterday. They up two all. Um, yeah, but the Knicks are banged up, man. Like it's like they're like like they they're losing guys like. A lot, man. The, the, Knicks, right? he did, he, the Knicks, yeah. And if he didn't come back, mm. you can tell when he went down, bro, they were just trying to stay in the game. Mm. He let the win, but it's going to be ugly for them if they keep losing these guys like this, bro, because I think they yeah, just want to be an OB and Mitchell Robinson is going out for like seven weeks. Like, mm. they, they, they're playing off of momentum right now, you know, mm. like hype mm. of the city, you know, like they're playing off the momentum, but I don't know, man. They, they need bodies, you know? Yeah. Yeah, nah, it, it, honestly, bro, it's all over. <laughs> well, I have respect. I have a newfound respect for Jalen Brunson. Yeah. Oh yeah, no, nah, Jalen Brunson is is he that Kyrie in his prime vibe right now? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, yeah, he, like yeah. he's just like I know the da- Dallas Mavs. Like, I'm happy they got. They, I know they're happy they got Kyrie and Kyrie's working out for them. Mm-hmm. But they're looking at Jalen Brunson like, hmm. We could have got this guy for way cheaper if we would have just extended him. You know what I'm saying? And he's younger. Like I know they're not they're not kicking themselves in the butt, but they're like, damn, we lost a good one. You know, like because he's nice mm. and he plays similar to Kyrie. So I don't see how him and Luca wouldn't have worked. Yeah. But you know, shout out to New York though, man. They they they, they still want. They still up two zero. Yeah. Of- nah, not for a fact. Um, it's funny that you bring that up because I was thinking about that the other day, though, too, which is kind of like they really fumbled the bag on Jalen Brunson, bro. Like, even though, like, they got Kyrie, which is that that makes up for it, obviously. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? The Lakers should have did that. <laughs> but at the end of the day, like, you know, they didn't pay Brunson, which we all know the story behind that. But, yeah. like, you would have had – that was your team literally right there, bro. That that was that was your finals team right there. Like that was the roster you needed to to put you over the hump. You have Luca and Brunson in your back court, bro, and then you have all these pieces now. With, with what you just added with PJ Washington, Tim uh, Tim they Hardaway, they could have did this four seasons ago, <laughs> years ago. You know what I'm saying? For a fact, bro, because all all what you're seeing with Kyrie is what you what is what you can see with Jalen Brunson, bro. And Jalen Brunson's not getting easy shots neither, bro. 
Nah. He's not getting easy shots. Like he's getting he's contested. Running. Shots. He's running. Like, like he's he's really doing his thing. Like, and now we're we're starting to see the emergence or the conversation being brought up with Jalen Brunson, you know, you know, throwing his name uh in, in the in the superstar rank. Now, I don't think he's quite there yet. I think you know he's he's definitely emerging there. Um if it's it, I, I like, definitely a star. Yeah, I, I feel New York, like he's a superstar in New York. Oh yeah, hundred percent. Because right. hey, bro, you already you know it. Everything in New York is Tom's ten, dog. <laughs> so I don't want to take away from his superstardom because yeah. I think he's a superstar in in the city where we're from. Mm. But yeah, I agree with you one hundred percent. But be, but being a superstar is a very like it's a very rare thing. Yeah, yeah. There's, there's only five. There's there's less than ten superstars in the league right now. Less than there's probably less than five, maybe. <laughs> no, there's not less than five superstars. <laughs> Because you can't think Kevin Durant is not a superstar, even though he just got swept. He still is Kevin Durant. Yeah. So if you're still playing LeBron James as a superstar, yeah, there's this, this more than five. Yeah. Luca, Joker, Embiid, Tatum. I got you. Know, you. Like, oh, you got Tatum too? Huh? You think Tatum? Tatum's, Tatum's, Tatum. Tatum's, Tatum's the face of that franchise right now. I we're gonna see the conversation. My thing about it, we're gonna say not. Like, we're gonna say this conversation. For I, got I got you. I got you. I got you. I got you. We're gonna so, say this. I can tell. I can tell we don't agree on this, so I can tell this is gonna be a long back and forth. <laughs> <laughs> we write that down. Yeah. So, uh, my thing about it, like, uh, but now nah, you're right though with the Knicks. Like, the, the reason why I said like it's over is because it's almost like with the East, it's almost set up for the Celtics to go straight to the finals, bro. Like and it go and it go and it goes back to those injuries, bro. Like the Knicks cannot win this series, not this series. The, the the Knicks cannot go to the finals without OG at the least bit. They need an OG Anadolu. They have to have OG Anadolu. He's their win defender, bro. He's he's exactly he's their best perimeter defender. Like he's he's what they need in a situation. And uh, if you're playing against somebody like Jason Tatum or Jalen Brown, because Jason Tatum, right? He's he's. He's been somewhat inconsistent in the playoffs, but he's been able to mask it a little bit because yeah. he's playing around such a great, you know, a great yeah. group of guys. When you're talking yeah. about Jalen Brown, Derek White, Derek White all year. I don't know. They're like Derek White, in my opinion, should have been a legitimate uh contestant yeah. for most improved. Players. And let's be honest, Drew Holiday takes a lot of the workload off of Jalen Brown and Tatum. In the mm -hmm. Like defense, mm -hmm. you know what I'm yeah. saying? Yeah. yeah. Like they, they have the best team, bro. Like they have the best team top to bottom. Yeah. So, like like you said, like you can have, have team, they could afford a bad game between one of their one or two of their superstars because they, yeah. they're so deep. Yeah. But but they lost for Zingas. We don't know when he's coming back for sure. Mm -hmm. So they're not as deep though. You know what I'm saying? So mm -hmm. that's their problem. You know, health has a lot to do with these runs too. So yeah, the they need OG and Anobi, but if they lose Tatum or Brunson somehow goes down, then you know this is back being a conversation that the Knicks could possibly, you know, take it. Yeah. No. Well, I don't know though because it, it it well it depends on it depends on what goes on in this series because I mean yeah. Knicks Knicks are in the end of the comeback. Yeah, Knicks are obviously in great position, but that doesn't mean that you know they 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 can't uh, they can move four straight. Yeah, they they can win four straight. Or I'm 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 going just off these next two games in Indiana. Yeah. Like we gotta see how these yeah. next two games yeah. in Indiana go down. Like it's not a series until you take one on the road, right? Like we always know that's always the case. You gotta take one, you know, away from home. So you up 2 0 you're in a good spot. Very important for them. Mm -hmm. So it, you know, it's gonna see how we gotta see how it plays out from here. But just moving forward, even though like if we were to predict the Pacers to beat them. Which is going to take them into the the conference finals. I mean, the Celtics, you know, they're playing the Cavaliers today, so uh, that's going to be looking like what uh, three and zero oh, if they win today. So I, I think they blew, they blew them out. I think they only played one game already. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, one game? I, I, if I'm not mistaken, I don't know for sure, but I know yeah. it was a blowout. Double checking. Uh, yeah, it's one zero. So yeah, so it'll be two. It'll be two zero oh today if they were to win today. So. Like nobody, nobody's expecting the Cavaliers to beat the Celtics. Like oh, they banged, they're banged up too, huh? They're pretty banged up too. Yeah, lost like, right. Allen. Like, um, like they they they're, they're banged up. They banged up. A couple yeah. of days not playing well. So, mm. 
Nah. So, so, so we'll see, man. But with the Knicks, they, they, they came out so flat last game. Um, that it's like it's like they came in knowing they can't beat them. Mm-hmm. You know, so I yeah. don't like. No, no, that's no, nah, that's a fact though. Because like with with the, because I'm I'm gonna, I'm gonna switch it up now. It's like with the Cavs and Celtics, like, or at least with the Celtics in general. Because the Cavs, and it's such a sad thing though too. Because it's like you know they did this trade with Donovan Mitchell to be able to compete, uh, and then now it's it's almost feels as if like they have to be competitive just so they can keep Donovan Mitchell. You know what I'm saying? Because they made this ambitious move to try to get Donovan Mitchell uh, mm-hmm. in some way, shape, or form. To Can he walk out this season, or does, does he have like a season or two? Because I, I know he's under contract. Uh, he's still under contract. Mm-hmm. They're trying to. I, I think they're trying to prevent him from demanding a trade. But if I'm not mistaken, because I remember he signed a max deal, so mm-hmm. he's under. He's. It's not like he has a year or two. Like, I think. He, I mean, it's not like he's uh, expiring contract. He has like. Two seasons, so they still have control over him. If I'm not mistaken, though, like some of these things are like it's hard for me to really pinpoint for sure. But like, if I'm not mistaken, I think I think he he's 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 pretty locked in, locked mm-hmm. up. I mean, I yeah. say, contract wise, did you look it up? Yeah, I'm I'm, I'm looking at it right now. So basically, um, he's on contract next year, and then the next, and then after next year, he's gonna have his player option. Okay, so he's locked for the next. So next season, he'll be an expiring contract. Well, next season he'll be the year before. After next year, yeah, so he has two, he has two years oh, left. They have control over him. They don't have to trade him right away. They can trade him next season. Yeah, you know, like they can trade him before he's uh, and then that's up to him whether he opts in or you know gets the extension. But mm-hmm. if he doesn't want to stay, they can they can see how far they go. Well, hmm, because then he'll be able to walk after next season, right? If mm-hmm. they don't trade at the deadline. Yeah, the player option. Oh, you know what I'm saying? But that's only that that is if. Only right, like I'm pretty sure he would he would need to be reassured a max of where yeah. he's going, but okay. it has to be a legitimate, uh, uh, like a legitimate contestant. Like yeah. it would have to be somebody like the Knicks or somebody that can still pay him. And I don't want him. the Knicks to, to get him. He, he said you don't. Jalen Brunson's playing way too well for you to put him next to a, <laughs> a player. You know, like uh-huh. you're putting him next to a similar player that's going to take the ball right out of his hands. I got you. And, you, you know what? A, a, a shooter, like I liked when you said Clay Thompson and like mm-hmm. guys like that, like you know, mm-hmm. or even maybe like a Draymond Green, like a tough guy, you know, something like that. You don't, you don't need, you don't need another dynamic guard. Mm-hmm. You need like wings, like get wings, have another mm-hmm. wing, to OG at small forward, you know, yeah. get a Kuzma, mm-hmm. get a Kuzma, mm-hmm. and you get a like a like you know stuff like that. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Guys, guys who can primarily shoot and then won't take the ball out of your hands, and they can work, that can play without the ball. Play without the ball, you know. That's, that's what OG does though too. He he can play. He can play without the ball. OG. But remember, OG can walk. I think yeah. OG will stay in New York because that's the team that can obviously give him like max dollars. Mm-hmm. But um, um, but he can walk. Mm-hmm. I got you. Got you. All right, so let's 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 talk let's talk about the series. <laughs> is it today? Yeah, it is today. All right, Dallas and OKC. So that was a good game. I'm not gonna hold you. That first game with Mavericks and Thunder, I felt like that was like a real. This is gonna be a competitive series. Luca hasn't been playing all that well uh, in the past five games. He probably had one of the worst five. He probably had the, the worst five games of his playoff career. I think he's shooting like like thirty percent from three, or low forties, low third, uh, low thirties, even from the field goal. Like Luca is having a hard time, but we know he he's he's been brittle uh, in the past couple games. He's been dealing with some injuries, but you know we were highlighting Shaw Gilligas Alexander earlier. We were talking about OKC being number one seed, but how competitive they are. Like, what's your overview on this series? Like, how you you know what? How do you see this series going down? Well, Mav, Mavs were my original pick uh, to win the series because I, I figured that um, that OKC's inexperience mm-hmm. hurt them against mm-hmm. like you know that's like Kyrie and like you know, but but I, I've been wrong about these young guys, you know, like mm-hmm. and man, like, it looks like they're they're stepping up to the occasion and they're ready, you know what mm-hmm. I'm saying? They're hungry, they want it, 
Um, but I still can't take away from Luca. Mm. Luca can he can get into the series at any point in time. Like he's been struggling, mm. but the second he gets it going, I don't see nobody on the other end stopping Luca Gonta. Mm. You know, once he gets going. Mm. And then you mix that with Kyrie, you can't count them out. Mm. So my my pick was um Mavericks and seven, right? Mm. But um but I wouldn't be surprised if Shea wins, like if the the, if the Thunder win. You know, because they're deep still. You know, they don't have a bench, but their starting five plays so well together. And the chemistry is just so, like, it just works so well within those five guys. Mm. And they're six men as well. Mm. That I just feel like they can, they can take it if, if Luka doesn't show up. But if Luka shows up, I got the math, man. Yeah. Yeah. Nah, it, 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 it's OKC are definitely in a, a, in a really good position. But the Mavs can't take OKC as – they can't consider them the same opponents as the Clippers. This is a whole different playing field, a whole different ball game. You know what I'm saying? Like, these guys are healthy, right? Like, and Shot Gill is playing better than most of the players on, on, on the Clippers, right? Like, and this is a way better defensive team than the Clippers also, right? Like, even Lucas said himself that, that Lou Dort, is top three one of the best defenders in the league all around, right? Like Luca, Luca and Luke Dort have a relationship <laughs> when it comes to just like them matching up against each other. And obviously, they don't compete each other in name and skill and all that. But we, but if we, at least somebody that irritates Luca, he guards exactly. him well. and, then, it, and then when you, he guards a lot of players well, let's not let's just be honest. Like mm-hmm. Luke Dort guards a lot of players very well. Yeah. 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 He, he like let's not sit here and act like Luke Dort is not him on a defensive Like he's yeah. really like I like Luke Dort a lot. He's a yeah. dog. He's a yeah. dog. He's a dog. He's a dog. He has mm-hmm. the size. He has the courage. He has the strength. And he's yeah. just like he he's just he's just him. Like he's he, he's gonna do the utility work, bro. Mm-hmm. You want to put him on the best offensive player on the other team. You're gonna do that. He's gonna take that that load off of Shaq Gilders Alexander and um and Josh Giddy on the perimeter. He's gonna mm-hmm. do that. That's what he mm-hmm. does. Mm-hmm. He's, he's he's that guy, like, and he's that guy. When you're a superstar, you hate you hate you hate matching up against them. Yeah, you would love to steal him away from that team and have him on your team. You would love that. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying like he's one of just that guy. Like Luke Dort would, he will fit with any of the thirty teams in the NBA. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm trying to say? Yeah, that's just how I feel about him. I like Luke Dort a lot, bro. Nah, nah, he's he's definitely like a team player. Bro. When, I play 2K, when I play 2K, you have the ability to bring players in. Two yeah. players I always bring: yeah. Luke Dort and Jonathan Isaac. For some reason, I don't know why. Jonathan know. Isaac. Yeah. I always, <laughs> for some reason, I don't know why. Like, I, like, I like his game. I like his size. Like he's like six seven wing. Like, mm-hmm. I just felt like the Magic didn't give him a good like. They didn't nourish him good. Like nurture him mm-hmm. to be mm-hmm. a good player. I feel like he would have been a way better player if he played with like a LeBron James or something like early on. You, you know what? And we got we uh, one of these days we gotta talk about the Magic though too, cause yeah, 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 for sure. Because Magic, Magic was a oh, team look. that I, I didn't even expect them to go to the playoffs. <laughs> I didn't even know he was in the playoffs. I think they would have been playing properly, like playing Tempsey around yeah. that. But I didn't think they were gonna be this good. Yeah. And then now when you look at their roster, mm. it makes sense. Yeah. They and and the they're roster. young too. They're young. Bro, like, bro, they have, young guys are here now. Bro, they're like 22, 23, 19, 20. Like, all these dudes is young on there, bro. All of them. I think the oldest guy on there is Markel Fultz. <laughs> we're, we're starting to see. We're starting to find it because, you know, we're we're younger guys compared to, like, this basketball era thing. Like, the Jordans, the Kobe era, the, the Magics, the the Kareems. We, we, we didn't witness all of that for sure. So this is our time to finally see, like, you know, because when we started watching basketball, there was no Jordan, right? Yeah. Or Kobe, but he was already kind of like, by the time we got older to understand everything, he was in the latter end of his career. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, we're seeing LeBron now. We were like, we're starting to like, so Dwayne Wade, we've seen him go away. We're starting to see Chris Paul go away, Melo. Like, our guys are starting to, like, go into the ring. No, yeah. <laughs> Durant's next after yeah, yeah. Hard, it's gonna be Durant and Steph, and yeah. then Kyrie, yeah. and then Kawhi, Paul George. Like it goes on and on. You know what I'm saying? It's gonna yeah. 
Westbrook, like it's gonna harden, like it's gonna happen, and we're starting to witness the transition. Mm -hmm. So our problem was we weren't paying attention to a lot of the younger guys, like outside of Zion, Ja, and I'm not talking about anybody now, like the Wimbies and Brandon Millers and the Austin. I'm not talking about those guys. Prior to that, we weren't paying attention to the Paolos, the um, um, the Vassals, mm -hmm. right? The um, um, PJ Washington, like those, 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 no, not PJ Washington, like those extra younger guys that we just overlooked because we were too busy focused on Ja and Zion, John Zion. We focused on John Zion so much for the years that we almost treated them like rookies, like for like yeah. their first two or three seasons. We, we forgot about the young, even to an extent, even Anthony Edwards. Anthony, that, and that's exactly what I meant. Anthony Edwards, yeah. those guys. We overlooked a lot of those guys. Like yeah. Shay in the beginning of his career yeah. was overlooked. You get what I'm yeah. trying to say? Clippers overlooked Shaq Gill. A lot of I did too. When they traded, I'm like, damn, that was a good move, Paul George. Like, they got Paul George for this young guy. Like, that was crazy. But it's like, it, it, it's. I bet you they would. Do, they wouldn't do it now. But you yeah. know, it's like, they, we overlooked a lot of that, and I feel like we overlooked Paolo's, and that's why teams like the Magic's, teams like, um, what are some other Portland? Like, some some teams are gonna be competitors out of nowhere. They're just gonna be boom. You know, it's gonna happen where it's just like, whoa, what the hell, Timberwolves? Where they just probably just be. You know, contenders. Mm, nah, I could really agree. Uh, not to, not to, not to um, steer away from this topic too much because I still wanted to talk about like the OKC and the Mavs matchup since that's tonight. Um, so how do you, how do you think this game plays out today? OKC and the Mavs. Yeah, I feel like Dallas plays much better today. Mm. Because they came, they they didn't really come to play last game, so I feel like they played better. It's a much closer game today. Mm -hmm. um, who wins the game? I feel like OKC probably still wins today mm -hmm. because I don't think Luca finds his rhythm today. Mm -hmm. But if Luca finds his rhythm today, mm -hmm. and he gets hot. Go, he gets going today. I feel like they win today. So it's all on Luca. Mm -hmm. If Luca gets going today, mm -hmm. Dallas wins. If, they, if he doesn't get going, it's a close game. It's a much more competitive game than last game. Mm -hmm. But it's okay, Steve still takes it. That's what I think. So, so he, here's my thing, right? Watching watching that last game against OKC in the Mavs, uh, there was a couple of things that stood out to me uh, in that game. Um, for one, the game has to start off with Kyrie Irving going off. Kyrie Irving is going to have to open up the game – Thrashing OKC, he has to be the aggressive one because obviously Luka Doncic is dealing with some injuries. He can't come out and and and, and do whatever he wants to do, right? He's gonna attract a lot of the attention, so yeah. that's gonna open up. You know, that's gonna open up opportunities for everybody else. Two, Mavs can't turn over the ball like they did in the last game. They were turning over. That's just the name of the game. You turn the ball over, you're gonna lose. The game. I don't think they do that again. Yeah, they, they they can't turn the ball over. Yeah, they're, more, they're, they're they're a pretty disciplined team, like you know what I'm saying for the most part. You and, know, and, and, like, and, and, the coach gets them prepared. He's not a Darvin Ham. Yeah, and then so the reason why I brought up Kyrie Irving as my first point was because Kyrie Irving has a knack of opening up the game, uh, not necessarily getting off the right way. Like if you look at his his averages in the first half and the second half, Kyrie Irving averages. 20 points per game and 50 over 50 uh 50 50 percent shooting from the field and 40 percent shooting from three why do, you think that is, though? Like, why do you think like he doesn't start the game because he's doing what he's he's playing second fiddle to luca to start it off like to get it going i think, I think, I think it's a momentum thing and i think it's it, it has to do with personnel and you know just kind of get everybody involved you know what i'm saying like like even though it would be great for for Kyrie to be aggressive and to take a lot of the boat load the boatload of the shots, you, Luka, that crush time. you know what I'm saying. But you still got to get other guys involved. You guys, you still have to get other guys an opportunity to start to get hot. So you know you, you you're spreading you know the the 
uh, the defensive assignments because OKC is still up there when it comes to defense. They're still one of the best defensive teams. Like they have guys who can guard at the perimeter. Uh, Chet Holmgren, even though he's not like exactly the defensive anchor, like somebody like Rudy Gobert or or he's very versatile. He's Yama, but, but he's yeah, he's a, he's definitely yeah, he's definitely capable of it. But with the situation with Kyrie, is like I think Kyrie just has to be the tone setter. Right, like given the fact that Luca is having his problems right now, he's gonna have to uh manage you know his stamina and his energy, so right, so he has to be very selective about like you know when he's gonna prioritize him, you know, getting his shots up. So, I think it's for the for the best case scenario, right? It's best if Lucas starts preserving his energy more so in the later rounds, like what Kyrie is doing, like saving his energy for the, for the second half. And Kyrie needs to start turning up a notch in the first half. And then that's going to keep them within the game, get other guys involved, right? Lucas obviously going to do his thing. He's going to back people down, get his fadeaway shot. He's always going to get his shot. You know what I'm saying? But preserve that in the second round. So, right, so you want to obviously put other guys in a uh, in a precarious position, right? So we saw Luke, we saw Lou Dort, right? He had three fouls last game in the first half. He was pretty close to having three fouls. Uh, oh, he was pretty close, you know, for, for um, building up those fouls. So if obviously you can't you can't predict the game in that sense, like you can't predict yeah, attack, continue to continue to continue to make him overhelp and exactly. Uh, you know because you have two superstars. This is what mm-hmm. this is what I feel like um, Dallas is not utilizing. You're gonna get those calls. You have Kyrie. You have Luca. Mm-hmm. Yeah, see, if somebody has, and now that, that was the problem with the Lakers mm-hmm. when, when when certain players were in foul trouble, they weren't continuing to attack those players. They would mm-hmm. just start shooting. You know what mm-hmm. I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Like when players are in foul trouble, you continue to attack them. You make though you force the refs to have to call those fouls because mm-hmm. if he misses a couple, he's gonna call the next one. Yeah. Continue to attack Lou Dort. Three fouls in the first half. He should have mm-hmm. ended the game with five fouls. Yeah. You're saying foul trouble because mm-hmm. that who's giving you trouble. So, yeah, he's mm-hmm. going to continue to give you trouble. But if you keep him off the court, mm-hmm. then you have a higher likelihood of getting going and getting in the mode. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So, 100%, I agree with you on that. Mm-hmm. So, you're bad. So, I mean, and then if Ky- and then I think if Kyrie starts going off earlier in the game, that might even switch – the defensive responsibility of Lou Dort from Luca to potentially Kyrie, you know what I'm saying? And that could potentially open up some doors for Luca, uh, some opportunities down the stretch, but that's not to say, you know, okay, he's just not going to let them, you know, give them any basket. You know what I'm saying? But it's one or the other, you know what I'm saying? One of them has to go off and Lou Dort can't be guarding, guarding both of them. You know what I'm saying? So at the end of the day, like it gives Shaw Gill a lot of leeway because we know that he he's also he you know he's also good he's also great as a perimeter defender but he's not quite like you know a locked down guy but you know he's shifty with his hands uh he has good ball awareness so we'll see man we'll see but honestly i i would i would i would like to think that this series uh remains competitive so i would i would say that the mavericks will win today i think based off what i said i think Kyrie comes out uh, way stronger in this game than he did in the last game, so I, I, I have I have Dallas winning this by a, by a hair. <laughs> yeah, so I'll, I'll, game I'll, or the, hmm? the game or the series? Tonight's game or tonight's the game? This game, this game, this game. I'm I'm, I'm taking it game by game because I, I I can't I can't uh, I can't over predict in 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 this playoff because this is this has been a great playoff, like. Yeah. This has been a great playoff. So Some injuries kind of messed it up a little bit, but it's been great nonetheless. Injuries, injuries mess it up every year. <laughs> you, no, you, but it's like, it, it, it hurt. It, it hurts more when it's like when it's a lot of the bang guys. You know what I'm saying? Like, mm-hmm. like yeah, it, injuries hurt. Like when it's like one or two, but we had a lot this year. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. At the worst possible time. Like yeah. some of these guys were healthy all year, bro. Kawhi's been healthy all year mm-hmm. for him to get hurt in the playoffs. Giannis is healthy all season. Giannis is healthy all his whole career, damn near. Mm. You know, the playoffs. It's just unfortunate. Two years in a row, Giannis missed the playoffs. Mm-hmm. It just sucks, you know. And then Jimmy Butler, mm-hmm. he's somebody that's like, this is playoff Jimmy. Mm-hmm. Somebody we, like, people wait all season for yeah. playoff Jimmy. Mm-hmm. 
And for him, like, you know what I'm saying? It's, it sucks. Like, it's just it's certain players you don't want to see miss the playoffs, though. Yeah. You know what I'm Like, certain players you just don't want to see miss the playoffs. And, you don't want to see it. And, and, and I feel like I feel like in the neat in in the heat uh, situation, right? Like I feel like they did with themselves because they had to go through the playing scenario. Yeah, right? like yeah, you know saying like like Jimmy yeah. probably wouldn't have been hurt if he didn't have to play in the plan. <laughs> can be the low season every time. You can make it to the finals by being all these top teams. You yeah. need to you need to treat the regular season a little more serious. Yeah, and you know get a higher seating, bro. There should have been no reason why this, the there should have been no reason. Why the Heat were less than sixteen? Yeah, you know, yeah. For yeah, yeah. I agree. No way, no way. Orlando has a better season than you. Like, <laughs> I, like come on. Yeah, bro. No, I agree. And, and 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 that's definitely a series. Like if he playing, if he is playing the Cavaliers, like healthy though too. Even with Terry Rozier too, because Terry Rozier was hurt too, and they traded for Terry Rozier. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, he got hurt. Yeah. They can beat a team like the Cavs. Like, yeah, well, they can. Or why? Yeah. I could, like, they would have gave Celtics a run for their money in that first round. Yeah. They could have beat the Celtics. Yeah. They, like, <laughs> he knows how to beat them. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, like, yeah. it, like, let, like, you know, if, if if Miami was healthy, this whole playoffs is different. Yeah. Miami and Bucks, too. Knocked off in the first round, mm-hmm. we might see the Celtics blow it up. Yeah. Right or wrong? Now nah, you're right. So Jimmy Butler missing this playoff changed a lot is what I'm trying to say. Like, yeah. like that's what I mean by injury suck. Cause yeah, like it's like a it's like a butterfly effect. You get what I'm trying to say? Like mm-hmm. if Jimmy Butler plays, Miami Heat's chances of beating Celtics are significantly higher. Mm-hmm. And if Celtics get knocked off in the first round, it just everything changes. It gives New York a better chance to win. It gives it gives it, it's it, the story's crazy. Our mm. conversations are completely different right now. Mm. If, you know what I'm saying? Like this is crazy. Mm. But I'm satisfied with the playoffs though. Like I, I don't want to yeah. take nothing away from how good the playoffs was. Um, you know, I wish the Lakers would at least beat the Nuggets. You know, I I would have I would have hoped for a couple more upsets. Uh-huh. I didn't think we see we didn't have any upsets yet. Yeah, yeah. You know, all the number all the top seedings beat all the bottom seedings. Yeah, there were no upsets. Yeah. You know? Outside of that, probably for most people, I would think um, the Thunder, I mean, the Suns losing was pretty much an upset because everybody had the Suns going to the finals because of Durant. Yeah. Web City, bro. <laughs> I guess that was an upset. And yeah. I think the Clippers was pretty much an upset because nobody, like, nobody really thought, like, I knew I knew Dallas was going to win because I just know the Clippers and I know James Harden and I know how, I know how things work over there. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So I knew yeah. Dallas was going to win. Like, yeah. yeah. Like I feel like if I was in New York, I would have been rich off my FanDuel pick, bro. Cause I just knew Dallas was gonna win, bro. Like yeah. it was like no question. Like the Nick, the Lakers, my bias because of LeBron. I didn't want to go against him or the Lakers. You know what I'm saying? So I wouldn't really bet too much on them. Mm. But Dallas, I would have won a lot of money, bro. Yeah. Why, wow, girl? Were Mavericks? Uh. Were they the under? No, they weren't underdogs in that shirt. Um, because Kawhi was out. Mm. I think that's why. But mm. Kawhi, I'm pretty sure they would have been underdog for sure. Bro, they have four yeah. famous, bro. Come on, they got the best. They had the best roster money can buy. Oh, uh, the Clippers. Yes. <laughs> money couldn't buy a better roster than that, bro. <laughs> Seriously, <laughs> deep, bro. Stat, young guy. <laughs> And James Harden still found a way to beat James Harden in the clutch, bro. But to be honest with you, bro, I'm not going to blame James Harden. Nah, you can't. I'm going to put more blame on <laughs> I'm going to put more blame on Paul George uh-huh. than James Harden, bro. Paul George was awful. Uh-huh. Right? He won him a game, but he, he just didn't play up to par. And then just Kawhi, bro. You got to be on the floor, bro. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm not gonna put the onus on James Harden because we know what James Harden is. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, he's he, and that's why they brought him there. All right, mm-hmm. you gotta do James Harden's faults and defaults. That's why you put him in a team that that you know you you put him around Paul George, Kawhi, like like that was the perfect team. Mm-hmm. So when he when he doesn't show up, you got Paul George, a scorer who can show up. Then mm-hmm. you know if Paul George doesn't show up, you got Kawhi. And defensively, they're always gonna be good. So it's mm-hmm. like 
Then you got Terrence Mann, Bones Highland, Plumlee. Um, it goes on and on, bro. They mm. were deep, bro. Mm. Man, I don't know what I do if I'm um if I'm Steve Blomer, bro. <laughs> I don't know if I blow, blow it up. up. Yeah, blow it up. But do you need <laughs> to pay Kawhi? So like, do you build around Kawhi? Do you trade him too? Like, yeah. what do you do? It, like, it, 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 that's tough. That that's tough. Oh. That's tough. Uh, uh, right, I'm yard so much. You trade Paul George for Jimmy Butler, like uh, you, like you know, do you switch things up a little bit? Like, what do you do? You know, like what do you do? I know what you do. Like, and I know Russ is not to blame, but Russ was awful. <laughs> but he was barely playing, though. He was playing. He was. He was, he was, playing, he was he barely playing. Playing. He was awful. Because <laughs> he was awful. He was awful, bro. He was horrific, horrendous. You couldn't play him. You couldn't put him on the floor, bro. He couldn't defend. You know, and he could. He can't shoot. Mm. So if you're missing your layups, you're pretty much unplayable, bro. Yeah. <laughs> yeah like Russ is like an energy guy. Like Russ yeah. plays well when the team is healthy yeah. and rolling. Yeah. If you need Russ to be Russ, he's not gonna be that in this team, bro. Mm-hmm. And, and and you have to have the proper personnel for him to be Russ. Mm-hmm. You don't have the proper personnel for him to be Russ. You need Russ around a bunch of shooters. And bigs, mm. you know they got a bigs, but I, I don't know. I just I just feel like he can't be himself in that team. They just too yeah. stacked. Yeah. The, the only way he, it's like the only way he can really do it now is if he's like the leader, like the like. I feel like, like you put Russ in the Spurs, right? Mm-hmm. Some veteran leadership, like you know what I'm saying. I feel like that would make them contenders. You know, you put like a Trey Young, right, in the mm-hmm. Spurs. And then you have like a Westbrook coming off the bench or something as like the veteran leadership. And then off the bench, he's because like you gotta understand, Wimby will cover a lot of ground for for Russ. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah. he can't shoot, but Wimby can shoot, right? So you have your big that can shoot. So when Russ takes it, all those missed shots, Wimby can get get them bricks that Russ shooting those threes. Wimby can catch that brick, put it back in. You know what I'm saying? I feel like he'll cover a lot of ground for Russ. Mm. I feel like San Antonio will be a perfect team, and him playing with Pop, who's strict, is probably going to have Russ going back to fundamental basketball, mm-hmm. right? You're not going to just go to the ball and just drive it blindly. No, you're going to play in a system where you're cutting to the basket, and you're going to get the bounce pass from the cut from Wimby or something like that. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Back cuts, stuff like that, like fundamental basketball. That's what Russ needs. Russ needs to play boring fundamental basketball. Mm-hmm. He doesn't need to be on a team where he has to freestyle. Yeah. You know? Like get the ball in his hands and do whatever he wants. No, yeah. you can do it within the system, bro. Uh, That'll help him. I feel like a coach like Pop will help him. A coach like Eric Spoelstra will help him. I feel like Russ would be crazy good in Miami. That's just yeah. my opinion. Yeah, I feel like he'll look way better in Miami. I feel like he'll look good in Philly. Mm. Like off the bench, like. Tyrese Maxey, score, 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 it's crazy. And he off the bench, you got Russ and Embiid. I can see it, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah. Like, like, better and shit. Like, not on no, like, he'll be better than um, Tobias Harris for them. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, little moves like that. Like, it doesn't yeah. always have to be crazy, crazy big threes and stuff. You could just go to a team and just be the OG. Like, you got yeah. that point. I think he should just play that OG role. And which yeah. is what he was doing for the Clippers, though. So I don't want to sit here and act like, you know, he had a big role for the Clippers. He's supposed to be that for the Clippers. But, mm. you know, it is what it is. Man. I got you. Hey, man. It's Cash Bars. Hey, send your support. Like the video. Subscribe. And we'll be back. This wasn't live, right, on YouTube? This wasn't live. No, nah. nah, it, it wasn't live. But, uh. It's gonna be it, it's gonna it's gonna be a good it's gonna be a good rest of the playoffs though. We're gonna see some more get we're gonna see some more great games. We're gonna see we're gonna see the shit ramp up and hopefully you know everybody stays healthy. Yeah. There we go. There we go, man.